Now in this section, we'll see OSP of lab with multiple areas. Now I'm going to use the same topology as we have used in the previous lab scenarios. I got three different routers with the three different labs and I'm going to, do, going to design them in multiple areas. Now probably if you have just three routers, you don't need to div divide them into multiple areas because uh, probably if you have some around 30 to 40 routers, still we can go with a single area without much OSP of issues with our big networks. But here we are not going to connect 30 to 40 routers here to verify the multiple area lab. I'm going to use the same three routers to verify multiple area lab. Now uh, then we need to follow as per the rules again. The rule is area zero should be the transit area. Like here I'm using this, this as an area zero and then which is connecting to area 10 as well as area 20 here. And this is my area border router, which is connecting to area 10 to area 20. And also it's an area, area zero router. Now in this scenario, area zero is a transit area because the traffic from area 10 to area 20 is going via area zero router. That's router two. And then that's what area zero should be the transit area. And there must be at least one area border router, which is connecting the multiple areas. Now in my scenario, it is satisfying the condition here. And the third condition is we need to ensure that the interfaces facing each other must be in the same area in order to establish a neighbor relationship. So if they are not in the same area, they will not form the neighborship. So these three things we need to keep in mind when we are designing the networks in multiple areas. Now either you can design like this or, or I, I'll give one more scenario where you can, you can try this lab. You can also design like this, making this as one area and then and then these routers in one area. Now we can make this as area zero and this as area 10, area 20. So I recommend you to go through with this lab after this probably, and this will be the area border router connecting these two areas. And this is my area border router connecting these two areas. Now we can have two different topologies, but right now I'm going to follow up with this one, the one you can see in the, on the screen here. Now the configuration wise, there is no much difference like we did in the previous case. We need to address this network and then we had to write the wildcard mask just like we did in the single area lab. And the only difference is we need to tell this interface and this interface, these two interfaces belongs to area 10. So we need to change the area number based on the area. And the same thing on the router 2 as well. We need to address this interface in area 10. And then 11 dot network in area 20. And then we got a uh, two dot network in area zero. Now the same thing on the router three as well. On the router three, we need to address this 11 dot network and three dot network in area 20. And that's what we are doing here. Now we need to have a proper design which satisfies the OSP of designing rules. And then when we are advertising, we just need to change the area numbers and the remaining configuration is same. We need to define the network ID and the wildcard mask with the area number. Now let's go to the command line and verify the same configuration. I think I have a configuration done in my previous lab with a single area. I'm going to remove that configuration before I go ahead. We're just going to add a command called no, I, no router OSP of one. And the same thing on the router three as well. We are going to configure a command no router OSP of one. Now once you give this command, if I give show IP protocols, you can see uh, right now we don't have any of the routing configurations. If I verify the same on router one, I don't have any routings here. Now let's go to router one and advertise the interfaces. Router OSP of one. I'm going to advertise 192.168.1.network, 1 dot network, the LAN interface in area 10. The 192.168.1.network 1 dot network and 10 dot network, both the interfaces are in area 10. So we are going to advertise the 10 dot network as well with a, a wildcard mask of area 10 again. Done. Now let's go to the router two. On the router two, we have three interfaces here. Now we got router two, 11 dot network is in other area, area 20, 10 dot network in area 10, and two dot network in area zero. So let's go with a router OSPF one command and advertising the LAN interface 000255 in area zero and advertising the 11 dot network. The 11 dot network is connecting to router router 3 that is in area 0 this one and then advertising the 10 dot network 
and then 255255255 area 10. Now once we are done with this 10 door network on both the sides, I should expect the neighborship between the router 2 and router 1. That's what you can see the message over there. Neighbor agency has been established and you can see the neighborship is full. Now already we verified uh, the neighborship in the previous uh, previous videos as well in the single area lab. So it's the same thing. There's no much difference in the outputs. Now let's go to the router 3 and on the router 3 also I'm going to configure. I got two interfaces on the router 3 and on the router 3 we are advising the 11 dot network and 192 to 168 3 dot network. So we can use different process IDs as well. I'm using two here. Let's say 192.168.3. dot network and then area area 20 and then advertising the 11 dot network in area 20 as well. Done. Now you can see the neighborship is up. Now for verification, we can go to any one of these router. Let's verify on the router three. I'll start up with router three here. If I give show IP route OSPF or show IP route normally, you'll see the routes here. Now in the previous scenario, we have seen O routes, but here you'll see them as OI routes. Now there is a difference between them here. O routes means the routes coming from the same area. If you see the routes coming from the same area, then it will be seen as O. And if you see OIA, OIA, you can see the quote OSPF inter area routes and OSPF routes. Now the routes coming from a different area, coming from a different area. Now in my scenario, the router three belongs to area 10, area 20. And right now this two door network is coming from area zero, which is a different area. So it will be seen as OIA. And one door network is also belongs to area 10, which is coming from a different area. So it says OIA. As well as this 10 door network is belongs to area 10, it will be seen as OIA. Now I can see all the routes, you will see them as OIA routes, OSPF inter area routes. Now if we go and verify the same thing on the router 2, on the router 2, if I, if I verify the same, if I go show IP route, now here you'll see the routes as O routes. Now why it is O? Because the router 2 belongs to area 10, as well as it, be sorry, it belongs to area 0 here and it's going to be area 10 and area 20. Now, which means in this scenario, the router 2 is the area border router, which belongs to all the three areas. And the routes coming from one door network belongs to area 10 and it is coming to area 10 router. So, which means it's the same areas. So you'll see them as O routes. Now the same way three door network belongs to area 20. It's coming from here, coming to area 20 router and it will be seen as O routes. Now, if the router belongs to the same area, then you will see them as O routes. If they are coming from a different area, it's going to be OIA routes. Now, if you check the router one, it's going to maintain the database of all the three areas. If I use show IP OSPF database, you can see it's going to maintain the database of area zero, as well as area 10, as well as area 20. And it's going to participate in the algorithm of all the three areas. And it's going to maintain the database of all the three areas. But whereas the router one belongs to area 10 and it's going to maintain the database of only the routers within the area 10. So there's a major difference here and the router two will be referred as an area border router. And if you try to verify the connectivity or the reachability from, uh, from your computer like 1.1, let me try to verify the connectivity to 192.168.3.1. I can still see the communication is happening but the only difference is from one to three, we are designed them in different areas, which is somewhat different. Now the, now, now the main reason of dividing them into multiple areas, if you have a very big networks, probably uh, you have some OSP of issues with the large network, like maintaining the database, maintaining the links to information. Uh, in those kind of scenarios, we can design them into multiple areas. But uh, there are some few few things we need to keep in mind when you are designing the areas. We need to ensure that they still form the neighborship and they still exchange the routes between them. Now only the advantage we get here is it minimizes the size of the database and also minimizes the number of advertisements as we are dividing them into different areas. But the verification wise, it's going to be the same again.